Wakanda forever. <laughs> the Black Panther has been the protector of Wakanda for generations and generations. Nice. A month passed from wire to wire. And now because your friend murdered my father, I also wear the mantle of king. So I ask you, as both Waya and King, how long do you think you can keep your friend safe from me? Yo! <laughs> we got the two-time world champion, Delaney Wallace. How's it feel to get your second ring? Uh, it feels great. It feels great. Uh, you can always do it once. Doing it twice is a great feeling. Now we gotta clean it up, do it a third time. Get ready for Sheffield. Feels good. Well, congratulations on a huge performance and uh, securing the dough a second time in a row. Um, so walk us through the day. How did it feel out there? Yeah, I mean, going into uh, squats, I felt great. Um, felt one of the best I've ever felt. Uh, came in, hit the first one. I'm like, it's going to be a good day. Hit the second one. Um, third one came through. Uh, ended up getting overturned, which kind of bummed me out a little bit. Just means I have to be undeniable, right? If we get three white lights, they can't overturn it. Um, so then going into bench, oh, we didn't ask about bench. So yeah, that's how oh, squats no. felt. I said walk, walk us through the day. Yeah, so I mean, go, tell us about the bench too. going into bench, um, I felt really good. I felt really good. Opener came through. Um, the second attempt came through. And uh, honestly, I, I, th I thought it was good for like 205 on the day. Um, but obviously when the second got overturned, Again, just have to be undeniable with the start commands and making sure that my elbows are locked out. Um, we played a little bit more conservative, blew it up. So that kind of frustrated me a little bit there because I'm like, ah, there's some kilos on the table, um, which obviously, you know, reared its ugly head towards the end, which we'll get to. Um, and then going to deads, uh, felt good going through warmups. Um, started to feel myself get a little bit gassed towards the end. Um, Definitely just have to kind of lock that in a little bit more. So then, hey, we hit our third, then we don't leave the door open for somebody else. And so I just remember uh, getting to after that third attempt dead. I'm just like, hey, you, like this is what you get for leaving the door open, right? You, you can't step on the world stage and think that you can miss lifts and that somebody's not going to make you pay for it. Um, I was just lucky that I was on the right side of faith this time. Yeah. So, I mean, tell us a little bit about the mindset. Like when you missed your, whenever you got your squat overturned, whenever you, you know, got the calls on bench how do you overcome that mentally yeah um it was a new feeling for me because uh, i don't think i've ever missed the lift on a technicality it's always been just hey it wasn't there on that day and i can live with that um but for it to get called good um and then for it to be overturned like that that really stings um and i'd be lying if like mentally it doesn't just like hit you in your gut a little bit um it doesn't affect you in any way Again, that comes down to sports, right? Um, and so another thing that I just need to dial in even more is just like, hey, next play, next play, next play. Don't let anything get too, too in your head. Don't harp on it. Once, once it moves on, just move on and keep going. Um, we all have the same judges, and so I can't, I can't complain too much about that. And so it's just on me to be a better athlete, be a better lifter, um, be a better competitor, um, and just not let that rattle me. But it's just like, hey, keep your head down and just blow up the next one. I think that's why, I think that's why 195 on bench flew so fast, because I, I was a little mad. Yeah, you a chip <laughs> on your shoulder, for sure. Um, I mean, you stayed positive. I mean, you definitely had the, a moment uh, to reflect on it, but then, you know, you stay positive and get up for the next one. When you, you were talking earlier, you mentioned that, you're starting to feel yourself get a little gas. What do you think that was about? Um, I don't know. I, I, f I felt great um, going through it. Uh, again, I think it could also just be that mentality thing, right? You go into it and it's like, okay, your third got overturned, the second got overturned. And so, like, again, going into that mentality of, like, next play, next play, um, even though net-net I kept a positive attitude, I do know that going into deadlifts I was just a little bit more frustrated um, than I than I normally am, and 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 that you know it takes energy from you, that takes your that shifts your focus, um, doesn't allow you to be as dialed in, um, and so I mean I think that definitely kind of played a role in it too. Nutrition wise, I mean Alberto did a fantastic job with me this time around. Um, we stayed hydrated, no cramping, anything like that, and so I think it probably if I had to be honest and self reflect on myself, it, it was probably more of a mental thing than um, anything else because you know it, it's only nine lifts, it's, it's not that hard to to get through. So obviously you're very happy about winning, right? Right. It's all about the chips, but uh, I don't think I don't think you're necessarily so happy about the exact performance, like what you put up in terms of total. But the real question I have is, um, so somebody had a chance to pull for the win again, right? So last year we had a similar situation. You had a big lead. Somebody put up something crazy to try to pull for the win. They didn't get it. Same thing this year. Um, how does that How does that feel? Where you are in a situation where 
you've done what you could do. Uh, maybe it wasn't the exact performance you wanted, but you finish your lifts, you're in first place, and now somebody is pulling, somebody's after you, and they can pull for the win, and there's nothing you can do to stop them. Um, as a competitor, it's extremely frustrating. Um, I, I try to do, like just in life in general, I try to be in a position where I never let my fate be in somebody else's hands. I will, I will always bet on myself every single time because like how, how dare you complain about the outcome if you let somebody else di di dictate your fate. Um, and so again, going down to, if I have a nine for nine day, the door's not open, right? Uh, I allowed that door to be open. And so, you know, being, it, I was, it was frustrating, but also I understood like, and I was completely okay with them actually completing that lift. Uh, because it was in my hands. If I had gone nine for nine, there wouldn't have been a problem, right? Um, and so uh, it's frustrating. I, I told Anna after this, I was like, yeah, we can't keep meeting like this again because um, it was actually the same exact kind of situation as last time. Uh, and yeah, that's just, that's, that's how the cookie crumbles. Uh, I'm glad that it rolled on my side, um, but the goal is to never let, never let somebody else's hands dictate my fate again. So going back to what we were saying earlier about how uh, in general, if you miss a lift, it's on strength, right? right? So if you look at all your previous performances, you're usually going eight for nine, nine for nine, once in a while, seven for nine. But when you miss, it's just strength. So here you had uh, two of your three lifts that you missed were nothing to do with strength, right? On squat, you got overturned on depth. Um, bench, uh, your elbows were soft at the start. Um, is there, what do you think you can do to uh, make sure that doesn't happen? Just be undeniable. Right, um, I pride myself in being a relatively technical lifter. Right, I I, I don't, I, I won't allow you to outwork me on the things that are 100% in my control. Right, if I, I'm just not strong enough, I'm not strong enough. But technique you can control. Um, not jumping a press command you can hold, you control. Your knees being locked out you can control. All those little things you can control. And so, um, it's just on me to just continue to be better. And it showed me that. Um, although I think that I am a pretty technically sound lifter, there's just so much more for me to grow on. Um, and it's a, it's a humbling experience, but I think that w that's what allows you to be hungrier. Um, that's what allows me to come back. Like, oh, I'm already ready to train again, right? Like, I'm, 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 I'm already ready to train. Just I know there's, there's so much more that I haven't put on the platform. Um, and I say it all the time. It's like we, we can talk about our lifts in the gym and, and brag and boast. Like, oh, yeah, I hit, you know, what is the 340 in the gym, which is like 750 or whatever. I did this. I did that. But at the end of the day, the only thing that you get judged on is what you do on those nine attempts on, on meet day. And so um, I just feel like there's so much more in me, and it's just on me to execute. Um, the team around me is great. They gave me everything that I needed, and it, it just comes down to me at the end of the day. And what's next? I mean, are you looking forward to having a off season now? A little bit of off season before you know getting back on that big stage again? Yeah, um, I'm definitely ready to train, but I'm 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 not ignorant enough to know that I definitely need a little bit of an off season. Um, leaving Sheffield, I, I kind of kept it under wraps, but leaving Sheffield, I was like battling some really bad groin slash adductor injuries, and there are days that I'm like I can't, I can't even squat two plates, right? Um, uh, but you know, just having good coaching, good PTs. Stay in the course. No, I knew I was going to be ready on that day, and so allows me to rest up a little bit. Allows me to get my mind mentally prepared, um, and now I have a lot of times to again, you know, go back, fix those technical errors, continue to get stronger, and so you know everything that I've been working for can come to fruition on that those nine attempt days. And just one more, you're, you know, this is your second world championship, your second win. Um, what, when you look back on this era and you think about Malta. 2023 World Championships, like what's going to be the thing that sticks out to you the most that you're the most proud of from your performance? Um, I, I think just as frustrated as I am with the with how I performed, right? If you look at just the bl like the blank numbers, um, at the end of the day, like you can always do something once, right? Um, doing it twice is the hard part, um, and to the strictest judges, um, traveling the world, doing all these things, and so. Um, and then also just being a part of the growth of the sport, right? Last year in South Africa, I mean, it was kind of dead. <laughs> it was like a golf, you know, a golf outing or something. And it, it you know, we get, we get here and there's stands, there's people yelling, like they, they're, they're feeling your energy and that, that, that pushes you to be more. And so to be a part of the growth of a sport, um, it, it's, it's extremely humbling and I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. Um, and I, I think just the experience of you know, walking outside and like people remember like who your name is or they, they saw your YouTube video or your Instagram or whatever and like you're speaking to them, never sp never met them before, but you're speaking to them as if you guys are long-term friends. Um, and just knowing that you have a positive impact on people's lives just by your energy and how you carry yourself. Um, 
and knowing that you're doing it genuinely, I, I think that's probably the thing that I'll, I'll cherish the most is knowing that um, the hard work isn't going unnoticed, um, the genuineness isn't going unnoticed, and that um, you know how, how, I, how I do things is having a positive impact on people. And uh, again, I think uh, when you're in a position and you have the spotlight, you know, it's your obligation to lead. And so just knowing that um, I believe, at least at this point in time, I'm leading in a positive direction uh, is, 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 is cherishing and just being able to connect with people from across the world that you, you never, ever be able to, I wouldn't know my man Penna from, like, I, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't know Enna from Hunger, like I wouldn't know any of these guys if it wasn't for powerlifting and um, just soaking in just the blessings, right? I wouldn't be in Malta right now, I wouldn't be traveling. I've traveled three times in a matter of 365 days overseas, never would happen without it. And so just cherishing being where I am at the present moment um, is, is, all, is all part of it. Well, that's awesome. And uh, you're a huge inspiration, man. Um, we're extremely proud of you. And congratulations once again on your second world championship. And we're looking forward to seeing you do it again next year. Congratulations. Thank you, my man. Let's go Team USA. Do it better next time.